Welcome to the Geek Home World. I am your host, Ed, aka Savage Tech Man. We talk sci fi, TV, movies, superheroes, and all from a geek perspective. You can find us on Blogger, Google, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. We're everywhere. Join the Geek Home World. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Geek Home World podcast. I'm your host, Ed. Check out, like, subscribe, follow, smash that like button, hit that whatever you got to do. But just don't do it to Adonis Creed. Yes, we're here. Uh, I'm wearing my closest thing to a Michael B. Jordan shirt, my Black Panther Wakanda Forever shirt. You can see in the video there. So sporting that um <laughs> for uh, those watching out there and um watching the video here welcome to another episode we're getting back in the stride of uh doing what we do here on the podcast and it's been a while this is going to be a quick uh review spoiler filled we're in what would be our third week i guess of uh, creed three being out so it being the third week out I'm finally getting around to reviewing the film. Did I like it? Yes, it was a good film. It had the strongest opening of any Rocky film, even adjusted for inflation, I believe, if I'm correct on that. You can fact check me on that if I'm wrong, but inflation's all over the place, so who knows. It was a good film, and like I said, spoilers, so if you hadn't seen Creed Three, come back to it after you've seen this. Take my recommendation, go see the film, then come back and watch this. And then you can leave your comments, questions, whatever, uh, about the film, what you thought about it. Creed Three did not have Rocky Balboa in it, and that's because of Erwin Winkler, one of the creatives behind the film, and Sylvester Stallone. They did not agree on the direction of, with along with Michael B. Jordan, on the direction of the storyline of Creed Three. I can understand creative differences and all that. Stallone still gets an executive uh, producer. Or he gets a producer credit on the film, you know, especially because he created the characters of Rocky, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, Creed, you know, they just some creative differences. So we this is the first film in the whole Rocky franchise. It spans over 50 years, just about 50 years that Rocky Balboa's character is not in the film in some way, shape, or form. So it doesn't take a lot from it. And to be honest, I hadn't, it's been a while since, it's been a minute since uh, we had Creed 1 and, you know, Creed and then Creed 2. Now we got Creed 3. And definitely with the success of this, uh, Michael B. Jordan's already said that they're working on Creed 4, or they will be soon. So that's awesome. You know, it's good to see the Rocky franchise continue on and now it's continuing on this a creed franchise that franchise in its own right and this film can stand on its own we find michael b jordan when we get to this film basically he's retired at this point in creed 3 and he's got and he's raising his young daughter and his wife and his wife's dealing with her um hearing loss and and uh she's still trying to continue as an as a singer but she's more in the producer realm of things now. And she's doing the best that she can with her situation. And any Rocky film is about, you know, overcoming odds, overcoming obstacles, doing the impossible. Creed Three, of course, ends up with the obligatory fight that you see coming. But, you know, I kind of wish the trailers for Creed Three had not shown you that there was going to be you know, who the antagonist was going to be in this. And um, because the buildup, usually you get you get a quick buildup and then boom, it's, you know, very formula- formulaic in the sense that, you know, you just get, you know, somebody ticks off Rocky or Creed in this case, and then they have to fight and there's a big fight and Creed wins, you know, or barely wins or, you know, gets beat up a lot, then comes back in the actual fight and wins and then they make peace. And that's pretty much what happens in this film. So, But what you see differently in, in this version, in, in Creed 3, is that what I liked is, is probably a creative choice, definitely, by Michael B. Jordan. But, you know, moving along with the story, 
they told they took time to give you the backstory and they spent more time on the backstory and building up these characters exactly what you should do and a lot of films don't do they just kind of you know do a flashback to 2002 i think is when creed and adonis or donnie as they call him him and uh his friend here they're they're he's going to watch his friend in a boxing match that he's got going on and um essentially uh, played by brilliantly played by uh king the conqueror <laughs> anyway uh we have uh, jonathan major excuse me I, I don't know my mind just went there for a second but yeah jonathan majors he plays as about as tough uh, an opponent that you could come across and michael b jordan's character adonis or donnie creed this is his best friend and it's like a golden gloves or some kind of boxing championship around 2002 and that you're showing the younger creed and he doesn't tell this story to his wife and he keeps his wife kind of shut away from that part of his life and brilliantly played by the way i don't know if it's too soon to say any kind of awards are necessary but felicia rashad playing creed's mother she does a wonderful job once again in in this creed film and um there's some important parts about that i'm not going to touch on here but that she does a wonderful job and he hides there's something that she hides from him and Basically, it's letters from his friend, and I, I had to look at it here. It's Damien Diamond Dame, like D-A-M-E, Diamond Dame Anderson. That's the character's name. That's his friend, essentially. That's Adonis's or Donnie Creed. Uh, that's his friend. He's going to wa- watch um, Box, and then he goes there, and then they get into a little scuffle, and they notice that... Donnie attacks this guy named, I think Leon is his name, and he attacks him. And then Damian Anderson, played by Jonathan Majors, Ryan Coogler helped produce this, by the way. Anyway, so I'm not editing this, by the way. This is just um, how I'm thinking here. Uh, I'm just trying to remember the story of the film. And so anyway, they get into a fight. So Donnie pulls a gun on the guy, Leon, that, that he's beaten up and all that. And, uh, Creed runs away. And so he's always had that in the back of his mind. And over the years, he blocked it out. And as Damien would write him from prison and all that, and says when he gets out, such and such. So we're talking roughly 20 years later, he gets out of prison. Damien gets out of prison and he comes back to, um, say, hey, what's up, you know, with uh, Adonis. And Adonis, of course, is, you know, champion and everything. And he's retired. And he's helping do kind of what Rocky did for Creed and, and for Apollo's son there. And, um, you know, they're training people and all that. And, and so he's working with a trainer at the gym, Adonis is, and, you know, rebuilt the gave back to his community, rebuilt this gym and all this stuff. And so all the, he's have, looking for a guy to spar with him. And there's really nobody to spar with the particular guy he's got there that he's going to be putting up for a fight against another gentleman. And so Damien, or who later calls himself Diamond Dane, he gets in there and basically is just like a street fighter and just, just destroys the guy. So they need an opponent. So he ends up going for the title and wins the heavyweight title, beats Adonis's hand-picked, you know, kind of successor or, you know, next generation, whatever. And um, so then he starts to, him and Donnie get into it a little bit later. And then, and, you know, there has to be a big fight. And it's, you know, there's one point where they actually block out everything. They're in a stadium fighting. And, and what I like about the film is one point what they do is they block out everything. And you just see the two fighters because in that moment, they're in that. And you have different ways where it goes back and forth and momentum either way in the final fight. And in the end, of course, Adonis is champion. So he comes out of retirement and wins the championship, I think heavyweight championship. And Donnie was pretty much a, a one in a million shot, but he basically kind of humbles him that way. And Adonis or Donnie says to him, you know, he's, 
I'm sorry that, you know, I didn't find, he finds out later that his mom was holding the, all these letters that um, Damien had been writing and why he was away in prison. And so Adonis says, you know, I'm sorry, you know, I should have been there for you and I'll do anything for you, blah, 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 you know, all that. And um, it's a really good story. I'm not doing it justice here. And you'll, you'll see it when you uh, actually uh, watch the film, which you should. And like I said, it's got a lot of producers on it. One of them is Ryan Coogler, um, Wakanda Forever, you know, <laughs> and Black Panther, which, of course, some of the great things Coogler has done. Um, but Michael B. Jordan is a producer on this. Sylvester Stallone is listed as a producer. And we've got some other people in there. The story, uh, Ryan Coogler, along with Keenan Coogler and Zach Balin. I want to make sure I say it right. So uh, they did had the story and Zach and Keenan Coogler did the screenplay on it and directed by Michael B. Jordan. So, yes, it's it's a really good if you love a fight film, it, it's a really good film. If you love a Rocky film, you're going to love this. Do you have to know anything about the Rocky saga, Rocky as involved in it? I mean, him not being here, you don't really miss him in the movie. So, no, you don't. But would I like to see Sylvester Stallone in the movie? Yes, but they would have had to write him in. And you get to a point where, okay, Rocky, you know, it's, why are you there? I get it, you know. So even there's enough for Creed to almost be its own entity at this point, three films in, especially that this is even more popular than each Creed film has opened a higher to higher numbers. So at this point, you know, Creed is Creed three is on its way. Creed four, you know, it, it, they're on their way to being a franchise. Uh, I would already say it is a franchise. It's a franchise inside of a franchise. So, and Michael B. Jordan, he commands a screen, you know, I, I'm wearing my Wakanda forever shirt here because Wakanda forever when it was a better movie because Angela Bassett helped carry that film and also Michael B. Jordan showing up as Killmonger in there. And I know they had to find a way to bring him back. And um, I know this is a side note, but it, I would have recast T'Challa. That would have been my choice. I understand the creative choices they made for Wakanda forever, but this is probably discussion for another day. But Michael B. Jordan, I had to wear the shirt here. This is the only thing I had that was really like a Michael B. Jordan related kind of thing. So I was like, oh yeah, I'll wear this for the for the uh, review of Creed 3. But um, it's definitely a very good film. I enjoyed the pace of it. As some films go, you know, they they can be very, you know, of a formula type of how the, the film progresses. And it, and it is. It's This is not groundbreaking filmmaking. Not at all. But it's not the worst film you, you come across. It's it's an enjoyable film. Don't get me wrong. I, I enjoyed it. So should you see Creed 3? Yes, you should. You should go out and see it. And um, I'm not sure what else I can tell you about that. If you uh, have any questions or any comments, like I said, I'm going to keep this nice and short. So well, I'm just going to pivot a little bit and, and tell you where I've been. I actually kind of took a year off from podcasting. I didn't plan on it. Whoever does. But, you know, sometimes you just kind of need to recharge your batteries. I was doing some different things, doing some career shifts, doing some moving here, moving there. Um, a lot of stuff going on in life. And, you know, life gets in the way of creating. But um, I feel good to be back in in my creative space here. I've got a new creative space that I'm working out of. And I'm still working on it. So the studio is not together. As you'll, you'll see there's different parts of it. You'll, you'll see more parts of it later, hopefully, as I... Uh, kind of decide exactly how I'm going to decorate things in, in here and, you know, and all that stuff. So uh, hopefully um, you'll be seeing more from, you will be seeing more content. Um, if you, I want to thank everybody who has listened to, we actually had a video version on YouTube of the post Oscars show, which we just put up uh, yesterday because today's March 15th. So I guess I put it up yesterday and uh on youtube and it's also wherever you, you get your podcast at so um google podcast apple podcast we're on there we're everywhere so spotify i think we're on there too yeah and uh other places so wherever you get your podcast you can certainly listen in audio format but our post oscar special was a video one uh i did with uh scott a friend of mine and uh who's who's been a great contributor to the podcast in the past and Hopefully will be so in the future, 
Plus, then um, we had, before that, we had an audio only, but it's also on YouTube, and, and you can just look at the name changes because I hadn't even got the video up that day. But literally the day of, it's the uh, pre, pre-show. Pre-show, I guess that's what you'd call it, pre-show, and then we did a post-show. So the post-show exists in audio and video, and so does the pre-show, but true video where you have, you know, us on talking heads on camera here interacting. So, and this is my first solo show back in over a year. So if you, you know, want to call it that, you know, um, so anywho, um, that's my thoughts about, uh, Creed three, about being with the podcast. We're, we're going to be doing some exciting things with the podcast. I am, I hinted on our last episode yesterday that we had worked through Scott and I had worked through our decades of film going back to the, from the beginning of the film industry. And so we certainly have to update it. So I've got to look those up, find out where I I put those in my archives and, and uh, we're going to slowly roll out some episodes, hopefully in the very near future, among other things. But, um, but that's one of the things I want to do is roll that out. And um, we'll be, you know, talking about our favorite films of, of each decade. So we'll be rolling them out by decades and, uh, it won't take decades, but <laughs> I promise it won't take a year, but well, it might take a year. I don't know. Cause you know, there's a lot of decades. It's over a hundred years of film. So that that's, that's, you know, enough episodes, but, um, we're going to be rolling those out. So that's something to look forward to here on the podcast, the geek home world podcast. I did not celebrate. I think our seventh year was it our seventh year last year. Because I think we started in 2014 on the podcast here. I've, I've got to check. I'm not even on my own computer here. I'm on a, I'm on my wife's computer, so um, working on a different one here. So I get a different setup altogether, and well, not completely different, but partially different. Anyway, so uh, you know, I love to talk. Uh, if you uh, and I'm probably rambling on at this point, but oh uh, well, it's my podcast, and I'll ramble if I want to, but. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments on YouTube. Please go over there to Geek Homeworld on YouTube and hit that subscribe button for new content like this. Hopefully, we'll be getting into some live streams later. I've got a con- another content creator friend of mine, been friends with forever, and his uh, channel's doing really well. You might want to check his out if you're into collectibles like action figures and I'm just randomly grabbing an action figure I have back here. Like he does unboxings of uh, action figures. This looks like a, what a stormtrooper here. This is uh, from return of the Jedi. And, um, and here or actually that, yeah, that, that would be from return of the Jedi. This particular one over here, I'm just randomly reaching on the shelf here. Um, for those who aren't seeing the video, they're just listening. This is, um, Han Solo on a Tauntaun. It's actually a Christmas ornament. If you could tell real close, you could see up top there, this little thing where you can hang it on the Christmas tree. And so uh, I'm going to be adorning the the podcast studio here with some more, you know, of my memorabilia and stuff like that. But um, anyway, my friend, the point is he has a friend, he has a channel that you might want to check out. It's a friend of the podcast. It's called Digital Caveman with two N's. Digital Caveman presents, and he puts out I think daily videos, and uh, which is he works really hard at it. He spends a lot of hours doing videos, and uh, we may collab soon. I'm, I hope to have him on the podcast here, and um, we might do a, a podcast with him as well. You know, on his, on his end, I don't know. We'll see. But he's kind of got his niche market in that um, he's he's building a pretty good fan base over there. So if you want to show some love and just throw some subscriptions over his way. That would be fantastic. That's Digital Caveman Presents. He's on YouTube and Instagram as we are. YouTube, Instagram, and all that. So I'm plugging my friend's channel here. So, you know, it's it's all about creators helping out other creators. I'm, I'm definitely one that, you know, believes in helping others out. So, you know, that's a good thing. So, anywho, 
I'm just rambling on here at this point when I'm not rambling on. It's just a lot of fun. So anyway, thank you for listening to the Geek Homeworld podcast this episode. This is our Creed 3 review. So if you haven't gone to the theater and I do really encourage people, especially after watching the Oscars, it really, you know, helps reinvigorate the fact that how important the experience of going to the theater and actually experiencing a film. Yes, you might have a great sound system. Yes, you might have, it might be cheaper, et cetera, et cetera. But once in a while, just on some of those, especially those opening weekends, those are the ones that make the difference. You should go out and check out what's playing in your your local cinema and just, you know, actually go to the theater and support the theater. There's been so many movies I've gone to see this year where to almost more than half empty auditoriums and if we want the theater industry to thrive and survive, let alone, like I said, thrive, but, you know, it's barely surviving. So you really need to go to your local multiplex or local theater or whatever and support them by buying a ticket and, and watching a movie and having some fun and escaping reality. It's it's nice to get away and learn something from a, a filmmaker's perspective. And there's so many people that are behind the camera and so many people that make that vision come to life. And it's very important that, you know, people see that, that people enjoy that theatrical experience the way it was meant to be. So anyway, I'm going to go and uh, thank you for the uh, listening to this uh, Creed 3 review here on the Geek Home World podcast. So like I said, we got a lot more coming. Check us out, YouTube, um, all your favorite podcast places. Uh, leave us some reviews and, and good comments and we love your interaction. So thank you very much and everybody. Have a great day, and I'm going to roll the outro here. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Geek Homeworld with your host, Savage Tech Man. You can find us on Libsyn, Google+, follow and interact with us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, listen to us on iTunes and leave a review, subscribe to us on YouTube, read our thoughts on Blogger. See you again on the Geek Home World.